proof of stake is a pretty simple idea. The more tokens you own and lock, the more often you are selected to validate a new transaction block in exchange for rewards. If you vote maliciously, your stake can be lost. Unlike proof of work that is designed to eliminate the need for trust, with proof of stake, the network is relying on people's desire to preserve the value of their stake to incentivize good behavior. This means it's more efficient from an energy standpoint, but arguably less secure. But you would need to own more than 50% of all tokens or collude with groups of people who collectively own more than 50% of all tokens to compromise the network without being subject to punishment. And the probability of that happening for a large cryptocurrency is small. But there's more. Delegated proof of stake is a system in which token holders can actually lend their tokens to staking pools, which has two benefits. One, the bigger the pool, the more rewards it will earn. And staking in a pool allows token owners to share in the rewards earned by that pool. And two, it takes even more tokens off the market. If more than 50% of tokens are staked somewhere, there isn't even enough supply on the market for a bad actor to acquire and use to compromise the network. That's why people say that staking your tokens helps to secure the network. But there are a few flaws with this logic, the most obvious of which is that when you stake a token, you don't control which transaction blocks it is used to validate. These staking pools will become increasingly concentrated. And who is running them? How do we prevent the market from being monopolized by a few pools offering the best rewards who will then subsequently collude with each other? We've already seen that crypto investors are suckers for rewards, even if they are sketchy, unsustainable yields. Nobody does any research into how rewards are earned and delegated. They just flock to them like moths attracted to light. How does someone determine if a pool is trustworthy? What is the point of decentralization if we still need to trust a few large players anyway? Many people use economic principles to explain the benefits of staking, i.e. taking supply off the market increases the token price, which has the effect of increasing the cost of acquiring 50% of tokens, and thus increasing the cost of an attack. But when you can just run a pool and everyone lends you their tokens anyway, who cares about the cost of buying them? Regardless, in reality, staking is not good economics. If the token is a currency, you want it to be available for circulation. A currency that is hoarded is bad for the economy. The idea that taking a valuable, useful asset and burying it in the ground is good from an economic standpoint, is a bit weird. Believing that burying your valuable asset should entitle you to some income rewards is even weirder. If a valuable resource is useful, it should be put to use. If it is not, it should have no value and maybe shouldn't exist. I already know what defenders of this mechanism will say. Securing the network is valuable. People pay fees to use it and stakers earn a share of those fees. And actually, I agree. That does make sense, but only up to a point. There is something called the law of diminishing marginal returns. This only makes sense up until the point the network is secure enough. Then every additional token that is staked is wasted and probably causing more problems and it solves. Investors should not be competing with each other for a greater share in staking rewards. They should be cooperating with each other to increase the use of their service. They should be cooperating with each other to make the service cheaper, faster, better. Staking just shows once again how confused this industry has become. They don't know if they want to be a currency or an investment and are mixing concepts. Again, you don't want your currency to be staked. You don't want transaction fees to be high. You don't want the price of each token to be going up. These might be good properties for an investment, but they're not for a currency. If the token is currency, your goal should not be to acquire it. Your goal should be to use it to acquire something else. People shouldn't make money off money. The best money is free and frictionless, but investors want to get paid to hold crypto tokens. How can a service both be free and return profits? If the token is an investment, you want it to be used productively. You want spending it to create new and better products and services and earn profits from the increased use of those new products and services. But as an investment, staking is lazy and wasteful. It's taking capital off the market that could have been used to build something useful. They're not wasting electricity like proof of work, but they are wasting capital nevertheless. Why do all these consensus mechanisms insist on rewarding people for waste? The reason, of course, is decentralization. The whole point of decentralization is to reward waste. Security necessitates that authority, decision-making, and capacity 
be dispersed across a larger and larger network of nodes, which means they need incentives to encourage duplication of resources. Your goal is the duplication of resources, which, beyond a point, is the definition of waste. The best consensus mechanism is simply the one that finds the least offensive thing to waste. In a free market, people who allocate capital wastefully lose that capital because they are outcompeted. And that's a good thing. We want wasteful allocators to fail because using resources wastefully makes the world poorer. But if the goal is waste, how do you make people richer by encouraging them to do something that makes the world poorer? Where does the purchasing power come from if their operation produces less value than it consumes? Think about it. How can an investor in a wealth-destroying operation walk away with more wealth? Does that make sense? The only way that operation can survive in the short term is if it finds a way to reward investors for behaving irrationally. The only way that operation can survive in the long term is if it finds a way to reward customers for behaving irrationally. How do you do that? Please watch my videos, in particular the ones about crypto Ponzi schemes, for a better understanding of the dynamics at play. Bottom line, proof of work wastes investment in electricity. Proof of stake just wastes the investment itself, which I suppose is better from a pollution standpoint, but not much from an economic one.